projects that had been realized incorrectly. And I think that, you know, it's, it was nothing malicious. And ultimately, there was nothing that was intended to almost prop the numbers up. But the reality was, as you had one end of financial year, and then moving to a new financial year, there were certain elements that shouldn't have been in the prior one, not in the future fin- uh, year, and vice versa. And I think that off the back of that, once I'd explained the differences between selling advertising and Cokes, um, we got to a stage where I actually realized, like, these are the issues in terms of what was recognized. And I think that the conversations around that were they were very transparent and they were very honest in terms of saying, you know, like, you know, if we've made any mistakes, like, let's almost uh, repent for those mistakes and let's figure out a way forward. And I think that, you know, a lot of times within that situation, uh, ego does get in the way and you have the ability to really, like, not have head-on conversations and not articulate yourself in the best possible way. One, from a naivety. uh, Another thing, from like lack of insight into finance, once again. And I think that's where a lot of problems occur. And it's natural to become defensive and to say, oh, well, you know, we've done nothing wrong. But in actual fact, when you look at it, like there's certain things that weren't best practice. And even though Mm -hmm. it's not malicious, it's not the best practice situation for that deal. And I think that's what uh, created a little bit of... uh, a little bit of headbutting within that space. And, um, you know, for me, I carried on down this route for a couple of years and, you know, just wanted to keep winning business and make sure that the business was still growing at at a great rate. Um, And also that key insight of us being too project heavy and needing an annuity model, like that for me was incredibly important because selling projects is a different mindset from selling retainers. And I needed to go down this route of being able to close some of those retainer deals. And it's almost like a different type of muscle. It's like being a bodybuilder and then having to be a sprinter, you know, like they're different kinds of, of techniques required. And, um, yeah, I think ultimately having to pick up 30, 40 grand a month retainers, closing those deals, it's a hard slog. It's the same kind of slog you would put in for maybe a million rand project, but then ultimately that thing has to sustain for a 12-month period, 24-month period, get through the first 12 months and get the client to re-sign, all those kinds of elements. And I think eventually when it got to about um, 2017, that there was one stage where I was just, I was ready to throw in the towel and just say, you know what, it's, uh, it's too much. Like I should actually just walk away from this program. And uh, so many people had said to me, like a lot of trusted advisors from various industries that I'd had a lot of one-on-ones and they said,